Hi, this is Jacob Anderson. In today's video, we're going to talk about the control shiv, how to tell if you can save it, and how to replace that little bearing in the control shiv. So this is what we call the control shiv. It goes against your speed control, goes in and out, slides in and out on a shaft to adjust the speeds on your Shopsmith Mark V. The control shiv is the smallest bearing in the Shopsmith. Here's the drive slave bearing. Here's the control shiv bearing. They can go out suddenly because inside are such tiny little ball bearings. And this bearing is actually turning at a faster speed than the larger bearings. So uh, there's a lot of stresses on this little guy. So it's not uncommon for control shivs to need to be replaced the control ship bearing. I replace them on more than half of the machines that I repair. First off, you have to inspect the control ship itself. Look for obvious problems. See this one here, totally cracked apart. This area here I call the socket. That's what the bearing is going to sit into. So the socket has to be secure to hold the new bearing. This one here has been worn badly and it's cracked, so this one is not deep enough to hold the new bearing. So this one would have to be tossed. And similar here, the entire button, which is what I call the thing that sticks out, has been ground down. And in these situations, your uh, control, or your speed control quadrant would probably be badly damaged as well, so you'd probably have to replace that. Now, if, if things look okay, like the very first one, you still need to inspect how it works on the shaft. If there's a lot of play, like this here, you might have a worn keyway slot, a spread out keyway slot. So if there's a lot of side-to-side -side wear or wobble near the end, you'd be replacing the whole control sieve as well. The, a little bit of lee, uh, leeway might just be a worn key, this part right here. So uh, between, you know, feeling it, you could tell maybe it's the key that's damaged. More likely it's the keyway slot just worn from years of use. Alright, so now back to this one which is in pretty good shape. To replace the bearing, this is how I do it. off well and that way we can look for any damage to the bearing itself. Feel it on the shaft. Okay, feels good and snug. No side to side play. <clears throat> no wobble at the end. So this one I can save. I'm going to remove the clip and roll pin. This is one of my trade secrets. I use two small hose clamps to support as I remove the bearing. Learning how to do this on my own, I damaged a bunch of control shivs. Now I'm going to push it out using a 5 8 inch drift punch pin. So you could probably use something smaller, but I just have the perfect sized thing. Just tap it out. A couple of taps. And there's the control ship bearing with the button still attached to it. Now I can clean up the socket, clean up the internal moving area. Now I'm going to look at the inside of the socket just to make sure again that there's no cracks or any damage there. I'm going to use some mineral spirits to wipe off oil. Get the socket nice and clean. Looks good to me. Okay, now to save a button, I use my little 
bench vise, uh, bench anvil. Okay, I'll toss the old bearing. And this button, I can save. If it's been ground down too much, then you could replace the button. I have these made for me. Or you can buy them already assembled into a new bearing. So here's how to reinstall the button. I'm going to spread the spread it out. Okay, give it a good tug, make sure. But it's going to be held in place because there's pressure from the speed control. So it's unlikely to ever get pulled out. All right, I go one step further, and besides using the mechanical, I'm going to use some of the bearing mount. This one's just <laughs> there. We go. So here, this is some bearing mount that helps kind of glue it in place. Now I'm going to set it in the socket. Have to get it even all the way around. And this is tricky. You can break the bearing. I have a correct sized spacer. Push it in with that evenly distributes stress. And I can remove these two hose clamps. Make sure it's seated. Clean off excess bearing mount. Now you can cinch it. <clears throat> There's several ways of cinching it. I used to do this, just use a pair of pliers just to kind of crimp it in from different angles. Some people try to use a punch and punch it from four different sides. But I, don't, I don't like doing it that way. <clears throat> I use a socket wrench. And that cinches it from all directions at once and give it a good tug, not going anywhere. Now I can put the clip back on. Give it a spin, feel how smooth it is, feels good. So you can buy these buttons uh, and bearings from me. I send it to you like this. The button's installed already. So you get it like this, and I include the roll pin and clip. Uh, you might see the picture with all of it together, but it'd be hard to install it with those things on, so you know, take them off if, if it's sent that way. So anyway, you can buy just the bearing from me. You can buy bearing button, roll pin, roll clip like that. I don't really sell control shivs. If you need a whole new control shiv, you can get that from ShopSmith. I sometimes sell used ones re rebuilt like this, but I really don't have that many left, so I'd like to keep my inventory. But uh, this is something that has a big learning curve. It took me quite a while to learn how to do it and do it securely and safely. And so I have a website. Here's my website. Shows you how to contact me. Uh, shows you my repair services, my parts, sales, everything's related to the Mark V headstock, any parts I sell. Uh, I'll do component repairs or full headstock repairs. I sell DVDs on how to do full repairs. Troubleshooting guide, how to figure out what's wrong with your headstock. I sell switches and bearings and belts for the Mark V headstock. So go to my website, lots of good information there. Thank you.